Hello, welcome to the Thursday, May 20th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Brad today published the answer to this month's forensic quiz. So if you participated, take a look. If you got it right or if you struggled with it, uh, maybe the hints that he's now providing will help you understand what happened in this particular uh, PCAP. Now, uh, Pratic, uh, congratulation. You won the Raspberry Pi 4 this month. We got a ton of uh, submissions uh, for this uh, challenge and We'll probably do more in the future. Not sure about next month. We'll still have to work that out. And thanks everybody for participating. And I hope you enjoyed it and also enjoy Brad's analysis that he posted now. And with RSA this week, the Center for Internet Security also released an update to the critical controls. We are now at version 8 and it's now 18 controls no longer 20. These controls are grouped in three basic uh, categories, implementation groups as they call them. And then we have uh, multiple safeguards that go with each one of these controls. I would love to tell you more about these critical controls, but the Center for Internet Security believes in sort of this stupid email validation system and SANS with its new overly cautious spam filter never allows these emails to arrive. So sorry, maybe in a future podcast, we get more details if that email ever makes it. But if you want to try it out yourself, I'll post a link uh, to the Center for Net Securities uh, page uh, in the show notes. And if you ever had a server go down while you weren't anywhere close to the data center or the office, then you probably appreciated the ability to remote access the server, reboot it, power cycle it, and get access to a virtual console. But of course, these fairly complex systems aren't necessarily without bugs themselves. And Dell just patched a critical vulnerability in its IDRAC 9. This vulnerability would allow an unauthenticated attacker to gain access to the virtual console so they have access to all these beautiful features that you may have access to. So better get that patched. And of course, you never ever should allow direct uncontrolled access from the internet to these management cards. And talking about devices that should never be directly exposed to the internet, uh, QNAP uh, has additional patches available that fix a critical vulnerability in Music Station. And then there's also uh, new details about an older vulnerability in QNAP's malware remover. Now, the first vulnerability is uh, serious but uh, somewhat unremarkable in that it does allow arbitrary file uploads. The music station application allows a user to upload a cover art to go with a particular music file. Uh, this is of course often implemented in applications like that, but uh, QNAP uh, does not require any authentication for the uploads and also does allow uploads into arbitrary directories. So this allows an attacker to upload arbitrary files onto your QNAP device in a directory that this music station application has access to, which appears to be pretty much anything. I haven't checked. I don't have the music station application as what user it runs. If that wouldn't be bad enough, uh, the second vulnerability is actually more interesting. First of all, it's a vulnerability in the malware remover. The malware remover is a security tool that uh, QNAP has developed in recent years. It will periodically, usually daily, scan your device for malware. And in itself, the malware remover is at least not trivially removed by the user. So you are pretty much have to run it at least once a day. The problem is that uh, this malware remover is implemented as a fairly fragile shell script or bash script. And it does read files from various locations in the file system, which can now be overwritten uh, by uh, the music station vulnerability. 
So all you have to do is you have to drop the right file using music station in a directory that Maver Remover uses to load its rules from and then exploit a vulnerability in Maver Remover to achieve full remote code execution. The Maver Remover vulnerability appears to have already been patched uh, earlier, so uh, should no longer be an issue. A little bit concerned about uh, the overall code of this Malware Remover application and uh, wouldn't be terribly surprised if uh, they missed the spot here where there is still a chance of uh, code execution. And well, that's it for today. As usual, if you like this podcast, uh, please share it with your friends. If you don't like it, share it with your enemies. Any feedback is appreciated. Uh, Just send me an email or if you like it, then leave a comment with your favorite podcast uh, application. That's it and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.